Volvo didn't sell 940 model with manual transmission in the US and Canada. As I've mentioned in my previous video, I've dropped automatic transmission and replaced it with manual. This is M46 transmission with overdrive that comes from 740 model. This gearbox has four speeds forward and one reverse. Instead of fifth gear, we have this button and by pressing it, we engage the overdrive. In my case, I've used two manual transmissions to build one good. So using the spare, I can show and explain to you how overdrive works. When the car is running in fourth gear, and only when it is in fourth gear, we can press this button and put the car in overdrive. It is then in kind of fifth gear, and we can tell that the overdrive is engaged when this lamp is lit on the dash. Here we have M46 gearbox. This shaft connects through a clutch to the engine. This is the gearbox itself. This shaft changes gears. This part connects the gearbox with the overdrive. This part here is the overdrive. This is the hydraulic section. This is the mechanical part with gears. This solenoid is part of the electrical system. This device turns on and off the overdrive. When this shaft turns with the engine four times, then the drive shaft turns once when the first gear is selected. One turn on the engine side turns the drive shaft once when on fourth gear and we have direct drive. With overdrive engaged, 0.79 turn of the input shaft delivers one turn of the drive shaft. A 5-speed M47 gearbox in non-turbo models gives the ratio of 0.82 to 1. Now I will take it apart and we will see how it works. And I will tell you what usually goes wrong with this overdrive. Bolts are only hand tightened, so I can take it apart easily. The oil is also drained. So here we have the shaft on the entry side and this one here exits the gearbox. Pay attention to this cam. We will come back to it. Here we have the overdrive made by Laycock de Normanville, type J from Great Britain. As you can see here, we don't have any working parts. This cam that we saw before is turning on the shaft and moves this cam follower that is driving a piston in overdrive's oil pump producing pressure in the hydraulic part. Energized solenoid shifts internal piston that redirects oil in the system. 
Let's take a look into the hydraulic part. There is a filter under this cover. Under this cap, there is another filter. Under this cap, we have the oil pump with oil passages. This oil filter catches small particles. And here we have another cap that holds relief valve. The relief valve allows the oil to bypass the system when the overdrive is not engaged. Here the oil pump builds up the pressure. Here the solenoid opens and closes oil passages. Here the relief valve allows the pressure to drop to about 25-30 psi when the overdrive is not engaged. But when the solenoid is energized, the relief valve allows for a sudden increase of the oil pressure to about 500 psi. The high oil pressure operates those two pistons and overdrive is now engaged. Let's see the mechanical part of the overdrive. Here we have two pistons behind bridges. On the other side we have sliding clutch and a casting that will hold the sliding clutch still when the overdrive is engaged. When the pistons are pushed out by the oil pressure, they push on the bridges that slide the sliding clutch and block it to the casting. Now we will take those bridges out. And here is the sliding clutch. As you can see, the clutch friction material is on the inner and outer surface of the bowl. This is the surface that the sliding clutch is holed up against when the overdrive is on. We pull out pistons.
Now the mechanical part with gears. Here we have a sun gear that is sitting on the shaft, but it is in no way meshed with it. It spins freely on the shaft. The sun gear is locked with the sliding clutch in a way that the clutch and the gear turn together at the same RPM, and the sliding clutch can slide back and forth on the sun gear. So when the sun gear turns, the sliding clutch turns with it. The sun gear meshes with those three planetary gears. Planetary gears mesh with a ring gear, and this one turns the flange that runs a drive shaft in a car. Once again, the sun gear is locked with the sliding clutch to turn and it is meshed with planetary gears, but it is turning freely on the gearbox shaft. As I've mentioned before, the ring gear and the flange that connects to the drive shaft is like one piece. On the inside of the sliding clutch we have friction surface that can be locked to the outer ring gear. Deep inside the ring gear we have an unidirectional clutch. The shaft that comes out of the gearbox mate with the internal ring of the unidirectional clutch. The shape of the internal ring of the unidirectional clutch and rollers allows the clutch to bring the drive shaft speed to the same speed as the gearbox shaft when the overdrive is not engaged. When the overdrive is engaged, the unidirectional clutch let go and now the gear ring and therefore the drive shaft can turn faster than the gearbox shaft, about 25% faster. From the first to the fourth gear selected, the internal friction surface of the sliding clutch is pressed against the gear ring. And we remember that the sun gear is locked with the sliding clutch. In this setup, the gearbox shaft turns the unidirectional clutch and gauge with the gear ring. The gear ring is locked now with the sliding clutch and the sun gear. Everything turns together as one piece. The gears turn together, but they don't work now. When we press the overdrive button, the hydraulic system is pushing pistons out, and the pistons slide the sliding clutch and press it against stationary casting, bringing it to a halt. Now the sun gear stops as well. 
planetary gears are turning around the Sun gear, same as in heliocentric Copernicus model. The planetary gears now turn the gear ring faster than the gearbox shaft. The unidirectional clutch let go and the gear ring is now turning the drive shaft faster than the gearbox shaft is turning. Aren't you dizzy? You should remember one thing from this presentation. The overdrive is not a British invention. It is Polish. Copernicus. Most common problem with overdrive is electrical. There may be no good connection in the press button at the shifter. The next suspect is the overdrive relay. If it is faulty, then resoldering can bring it back to life. The solenoid. Apply current to it and listen for a click. There is a fourth gear sensor on the top of the transmission. It prevents overdrive from engaging in lower gears. Check this connection as well. The relay is located behind breakers here. The press button on the shifter. The solenoid. and the fourth gear sensor. In the mechanical part, check the sliding clutch for wear. The hydraulic system may need new springs and gaskets.